So either fellows. So we're working on this here gearbox clutch. And while we were at it, we remembered a nifty idea that you guys suggested some time ago. Specifically repurposing a clutch to use it as a brake assembly. Sounds awesome. Let's give it a try, I mean, why not? We have a lot of lot of parts lying around. So let's make us a set of clutch-based brakes then. It seems pretty straightforward, but let's see how this actually plays out. Let's do this. Okay guys, so this is all rather interesting. Fitting a clutch pressure plate, well, it obviously takes up quite a bit of space. Also, you'd want to have two in there. There's just not enough space on the hub for them. It also would have meant spacing the wheel very far out. And that is never a good thing. And so we've gone ahead and taken the pressure plate assembly apart, removing the actual plate that clamps down onto the clutch disc. So yeah, we've taken that bit out. You'll also see that we've modified the disc itself, removing the damper with the springs, the bit with the splines. Instead, we're running this sort of hub. That's going to connect to the spindle on the car. As for these clutch pressure plates, we're going to be getting those to work with the stock brake calipers. To make sure everything is nice and even, we're going to be installing two calipers. So we're going to be adding an extra caliper per side to ensure that the entire surface is engaged. This should make for a really effective braking mechanism, because the surface area is enormous. After all, this is what used to be a clutch. It is able to tolerate the enormous stress that the engine exerts onto it, I mean, an engine is going to turn at a pretty impressive speed. It puts loads of torque through the clutch, and it's very happy to hold up. In this application, it's also going to be under a lot of load, even though it won't be turning at such high revs. But let's carry on with the assembly, and once we're done with this first version that we're only making for one side for the time being, we're still trying to figure out how to keep this simple. Anyway, once we're done, we're going to evaluate whatever we are able to cook up. If we can get this to work and ensure that the pressure is exerted evenly, this should turn out to be very effective. Because a regular brake pad is somewhat limited in terms of surface area, but here you have an entire circle on a lot of... So we ran into a bit of an issue. We had to do some extra machining, remove material around the edge. The thing is that it was getting in the way of the piston. There was interference between the piston and the edge of the hub, and so we had to machine it. Alright, so we've made it out onto the proving grounds, you're all very familiar with this place. Over there in the distance you'll see we've placed a couple of cones. And so I'm going to be accelerating and once I reach the cones, I'm going to initiate braking. I mean, we have some idea about the car's baseline braking performance, but given that conditions vary from one day to another, in terms of humidity, temperature, all of that is going to affect stopping distance. So let's try braking from various speeds, place cones to mark the stopping distance on the factory brakes, then we'll install the new custom system that we cooked up that is clutch-based, and put it through its paces. Okay, let's get to it. And here we go. Right here I've got a digital speed readout. So for starters, I think we should keep the speed reasonable. Okay. 
60 kilometers an hour seems like a good place to start. Check that out. I take it they were locked up the entire way? So that was 60. Now I'm going to try getting up to, well, I mean, not try, but actually accelerate to 80 kilometers an hour and see how the brakes perform from that speed. I am super curious, so let me make my way back to the starting line. The stopping distance should increase considerably from 80. Wow, the car was really all over the place. I got up to exactly 80 kilometers an hour. You take the previous stopping distance and add it... So the stopping distance basically doubled compared to 60, got it. Let me have a look. Yeah, you were right. The distance between the big cone... and the point where I stopped from 60 and then... I mean, it is quite a lot. I'd say it's probably around 20 meters, and indeed, the increase is more or less in the ballpark. And now I suggest we conduct an experiment that should be fairly interesting. We've got the car up on some jacks. That's going to allow us to grab a gear, get the engine up to maximum revs, give the brakes just enough action to allow the engine to turn the wheels, we wait for 30 seconds and measure the temperature of the brake discs. Because, as we all know, brake rotors can be quite prone to overheating. So we want to see how warm they're going to get, to then be able to compare them to the clutch-based mechanisms that we've made, which we're also going to subject to this sort of test. Okay, let's try this out. Okay. I'm going to rev this out. Here we go. I'm definitely getting the smell of brakes. Yeah, actually it's a full-blown stench. 380 degrees. 380? Holy cow, we've gotten them warm. The pedal fizzing, that was probably the brake fluid boiling, no? So, 380 degrees. That was the peak temperature. Holy cow, and that's just after 30 seconds. 380 degrees is pretty serious. And the smell is just so nice. But that's not clutch. That is 100% the smell of brakes. Okay, so we've got a baseline. 380 degrees in second at full throttle. Slightly press the brake pedal for 30 seconds. 380 degrees. Now let's install our makeshift brakes and see how they do. Let's do this. Let me show you what we've made here. This is what we've pulled from the clutch assembly. The actual plates that press against the clutch disc. This is pretty thick and it has quite a bit of weight to it. To those we've welded on a few tabs, and we've modified the calipers as well. Some additional supports for them to lodge into the tabs. They're going to be attached to the calipers. Here we have a few lovely spacers that we've machined in order to be able to mount the clutch brakes. Yeah, and the clutch disc is going to serve as a brake rotor while the clutch pressure plates are going to clamp down on the clutch disc from either side. So that is how the system works, and it actually looks really good. Because, well, the... the surface area is pretty enormous, and uh, that huge surface area is going to come into play. I expect this to be really effective. And so we have got one plate, we've got another plate, we've got a couple of calipers, and all of this is going to be pressing down onto the clutch disc. The ladder is perfectly centered, and so now that we've got all of that in place, it's time to get to the testing. Let's go! All right. Let's get up to 60 Ks. Let's 
Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Wow, did I have to press down hard on the pedal. Braking performance was not good at all. Why does it smell like roasted clutch? Holy cow, that was intense. The discs have fallen apart. And I can see smoke. They only had one stop in them. We failed hard. Get the spare set of pads? You have to be carrying a lot of spare pads. You were applying emergency braking. Indeed I was. The stopping distance is the same as on stock brakes from 80. You can say that again. Almost exactly the same. Maybe one meter longer. How do we measure the temperature, though? We still have one set left. Why did this one fall apart? My assumption is that it's down to this wheel having a bit of extra grip, with me sitting on this side of the car. Does that sound right? But then the wheels weren't locking up. So here is what we're seeing after removing the wheel. That's quite the vivid picture. These are... bits of clutch disc. Yeah, I am pulling chunks from out of there. The disc is sticking out and is on the verge of escaping. Where does this leave us, then? Well, look, you've got the engine, flywheel, rotation, the clutch pressure plate, which is clamping down with a certain amount of force, just the right amount as to ensure that the disc doesn't get crushed. Pressure is evenly distributed, and from there it just transfers the torque to the gearbox input shaft. But then say you're going for a burnout, you're in first gear, the gear ratio is low, you also have a differential, apparently the stress isn't going to be quite as high compared to what we got here. Here we got a couple of brake calipers, the pedal, brake booster. For a more intense braking, you're always going to press down harder on the pedal. And this friction material isn't quite as hard as in the case of brake pads. And the end result of that is a clutch disc that got crushed. Okay, well, let's remove this here pressure plate and have a look to see what's going on inside, then. Check if there's any damage that we can't see from the outside. So, look here, we've removed... the outer pressure plate, which is supposed to push up against the clutch disc from this side. And it looks like it was clamping down with such force that the clutch disc got crushed. Yeah, that seems to be the situation. Obviously, this got warm, there was smoke. But yeah, this got crushed. You'd imagine this would also be dealing with enormous forces in its intended application, but it's just not made to cope with the stresses associated with getting a car to stop with full braking force applied. And that is pretty unfortunate. We expected this to work just fine, but in reality, it's just too weak. It was not able to handle the stress we put it through. Oh well, the important thing is that on the other side... Why did it hold up on that side? Can someone give me an answer to that question? Now, we did want to measure how hot it would get. So let's repeat that procedure. I'm going to start the engine, throw the transmission into gear, foot to the floor and apply as much braking force as I can to where the engine is still able to turn the wheels. We'll do that for 30 seconds and see how hot the mechanism gets. Okay, well, let's see... how hot the brakes are gonna get. These unbalanced wheels. Right, well, here we go. Start the timer and here goes nothing. I'm having to push it pretty hard. Just a bit more. 
And we have smoke. Get a reading. What do we got? So here's what's up. Now you'd assume that with the extra surface area you wouldn't need to press down on the pedal as hard, but that was not the case. I applied a lot of pressure. The surface area doesn't really affect that, it would seem. And the temperature was about the same. Okay, so we've made brake mechanisms that were clutch-based. You would have just seen how they work. They barely do. And that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and catch you guys later.